do is I like to run these to the corner first in the nose and then do the corner coming down because then the edges um, cover up the edges of the pieces that's going in there. Let me move my scrap a little bit. And then people do it a different way, but what I like to do is I'll take a little scoop out of the corner like that, flick that little ball over in the middle so it's in the middle of the knife, like that. And that way, just like it. Put it on there to where there's a little bit of paper stuff, so I'll put a little extra on there. Put it. I'll take the tape, put it right to the corner, just like that. Make sure it's embedded in there real good. Okay. Strike it off. Okay. Right, well, I'll do this other one. Right here. Maybe get a better view. Put your mother on your knife. Got your cross just like it. You don't want too much, but you definitely don't want too little. Just like that. This one's kind of a bad joint. Seems like I'm putting a lot of mud on there because I am. It's kind of a bad joint right there. I don't know. There's a header in here, so sometimes the headers are not exactly the same thickness as the wall. But once it's done, you know, you never know. Quit fumbling around here and get that thing on the wall. <laughs> there we go. side I need it on like that so we'll do just like that and same thing the opposite side keep it on one side of the knife well I did the same side but you need to pull that side increase your tape I need to be about eight inches taller this scaffold won't go up another eight inches. It'll go up a foot, but not another eight inches. This one's one side of the knife. and it's a whole lot easier than trying to do both sides at the same time. So you do one side and then I alternate which side of the angle I put it on depending on what side the other one is at. 
on the ceiling, I've been to this, the ceiling part of that angle. So I'll do the same here. That side of the corner will be done. I won't have to bed that side of the corner again. Burn that edge. See how that knife is going to burn that edge. And then pull it. And what I mean by alternate the sides, I'll go on. This side of this one, not on this side like that, but I'll go on the off side and then this one I'll pull that way. I did there. I pulled the ceiling part. Now I won't have to run that tape um, anyway, but any, you know, act like that's not there. But I pulled. That one edge, see there's, you can see both edges of the tape here. And I bedded that one side, bedded the opposite coming down, like that. And then on the wall part, I did the wall part coming across. And that way, when I do the other sides of it, it won't, I won't be messing my own mud up. It's a lot more sand than you're going to have to do if you leave it like that. And plus, the mud's going to shrink anyway. You're going to have to bed, uh, put another bed on it anyway. Because that's not going to do it. It's going to shrink up and leave a divot there if you don't. So, you do it just like that. You put mud on, wipe it all off. Mud on, all off. And just leave it in the hole. Then you don't even have to sand it. And the way we do it, though, we don't do one at a time. Sand them, that's a good thing. All the time, I, I see people that don't have much experience in it, and they'll try and put that little bed on them, like I was talking about. And uh, then they got to go in there and sand them and sand them and sand them to, to get that uh, speed bump off. And it doesn't make any sense because that right there, see, I'll hit that again after that dries, and I'll hit it again after that dries. I'll do it three times. You don't even have to sand it, and you'll never see the divot. Even if you don't texture it, you won't see the divot. Because there's not going to be one. Now, usually, the long, the long joints are tapered, so the, the tape will work, fit down in there, and it won't poke out, like on the butt joint. See how the butt joint will teeter-totter. I do, I always check the joint first. You can see by it under, I don't know if you can see that, but I always check to make sure it doesn't do that, and if it does, how much. You can scrape it down and get the trash off of it. Scrape it around the electrical box. Thumb. Just like that. Down the middle once. 
in the back. So I got a little bit, little bit of this thing right there, but it's getting another bed anyway. But that keeps a nice feathered edge. You don't have to sand it much. Now butt joints, they're a little bit different. They got, they don't have the inset of the tape. So it's sticking above the surface. You hear teeter talking. So you got to go on each side. It's called busting in that. show you how I do metal corner beads. So this I do use mud straight out of the box. But it's pretty thick. Yeah, so I want to use it as thick as possible so it'll drain dry. So it'll dry faster and it won't shrink as much. Did you talk to yourself again? I'm sorry? Did you talk to yourself again? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Ten inch knife. thing I like to use right out of the box. Burn the edge. Just like it. Gotta be inside. So that and your signature. See, that's going to shrink, and I'll show you what it looks like after it shrinks. But it won't shrink as bad straight out of the box without thinning it. Now, we'll do some final bit. Now, for the final bit, now you can see this has one bit. I'm going to put you up close there so you can see that you can tell. It's only one bed on there because it shrank up so much. Oh, where am I at? There we go. It just 
shrinks up because that's just what the first bed does. It's just the filler bed. And do the final bed. I like to thin the mud down a little bit just so uh, <coughs> it's easier to flow, plus it doesn't have to fill in so much. So I'm gonna do this over here. And uh, I'm gonna do that joint. Usually I do, if I, if I have a choice, I'll do the long joint going to the metal corner bead and let it dry. And then I'll come down with the metal, on the metal corner bead and cover the edge that the, it leaves. But I'm just gonna bed this out real quick just to show you. I wanna do the window, the corner bead first and then pull the joint, so. And what you hear in the background is the homeowner playing his bagpipe. He's a firefighter and he's uh, got a bagpipe band going. And he's in there entertaining his children with a bagpipe. So it's basically the same principle as the first one. It's, it's this time you're using a full 12 inch pipe. You want to be careful on this corner bead with your feet and your knife. If you hear this, there's, there's no there's no dents in there. That's a good knife. It's my knife. <laughs> so definitely don't want to dent your knife by hitting the edge on the corner bead. So a lot of you can do like this. Use the edge of your knife like this. Those weren't even on the corners there, they were a line. What you can do about that is while well, it's after it dries, you can come and take your six inch knife in and pull a little bed across that line like that and even it up the other surface. And then after that dries, do the whole thing. That's not going to hardly need to be the same thing. I 
Yeah, just put it on the floor. Just like that, voila. Yeah. <clears throat> Doing it wet on wet, you're gonna see a little ripple right there. You know, that's okay. And if you're a beginner, or even if you, you're not a very, uh, you know, a beginner and you're still not good enough to where you can leave a little ripple like that, you can always run this one, let it dry and then run the other one over top of it and it covers that edge up so you won't even have a ripple. These aren't quite dry enough to even mess with. The corners, you want to wait, when you do one side of the corner, you want to wait till it's completely dry. See that? You see that wet? Now it's almost dry and you think, oh, I can do that. But actually that is where your knife is going to be touching. When you do this side, when you do this side, it's actually going to be touching that wet part, so it needs to be dry in, all the way to the wall right there. It, you know, because your knife isn't going to be touching out here, so this is dry. You know, it, yeah, it looks good and everything, but then you'll dig that out when you try and bed that other side if you're not good. So, and that's just about it. You know, you want when I come back. I'll have that little bit of ripple of sand. And uh, you know, me and I touch up, I always touch up before I sand. I'll come in here with a six inch knife and I'll just touch every little bit insignificant off, knock down some pieces of trash or whatever, and then I just barely have to sand it. Hello. Now, to match that texture, I gotta figure out what the, how thin the mud is, what size tip or orifice to go on the hopper. Where is my mud? Oh, it's out here. I've already sprayed part of the wall. See, it looks kind of the same. Of course, it's unpainted. And plus, it'll shrink up a little bit as it dries. Also, you got to have the air coming out just right and the trigger pulled just right. You can't pull it too far to let too much mud out. There's several factors that go into matching texture. Texture's dry. Get that painted and it'll look just like the texture in the house. I think I'll uh, leave the plastic and stuff on the windows so whenever he does the paint, you don't have to worry about keeping the paint off the windows. But that's how you tape bed and texture.